very, very honored today to have Brother Patrick, Coles, Patrick um, Ellis, who is the president of the Catholic University of America, to give us greetings from the Catholic University of America. So let's have a little applause for us. I'm just going to say a word on why we're so happy to have you. Excuse me, it's the allergy season. The uh, family mission of the Catholic University was to show to uh, the nation 100 years ago that truth is one, that it is an attribute of God, it is in fact constitutive, of course, uh, to the best of our divided awareness of God, truth, unity, and beauty, and goodness. Thus, uh, truth cannot contradict itself anywhere across the spectrum of human knowledge. It's, we just have to be comfortable with that, and we have to keep pushing that out. When Catholic University was founded, the, the first university, uh, research university in the country, Hopkins, was only 10 years old, give or take. And it had already staked a claim across all of the quantifiable, measurable dimensions of reality, but there was some indication that, it, that people were beginning to think that's all there was, that if you couldn't measure it, of course, along the lines of the philosophy of the time, that it didn't exist. So the, the bishops, particularly the Spaldings, uncle and nephew, and Bishop Ireland, uh, three exceedingly visionary, uh, busy bishops, kind of persuaded the Council of Baltimore in 84, 1884, that we ought to have ourselves one of those to show that the sciences and philosophy and sacred doctrine and the arts were not uh, incompatible, that, that if you stayed with a given truth long enough, its harmony with all truth would show up a lofty and daunting founding mission uh, of which no human institution has ever proved to be fully worthy. Mm -hmm. we, we strive toward that because what has happened on the same parallel track, as we all know, is the fundamental challenge of specialization, whereby people of necessity carve out uh, limited swatches of reality as their particular professional purview, and as I say, necessarily so. <laughs> the result is, however, that over that century we have become less and less capable of talking to one another across disciplinary boundaries, and therefore less and less capable of witnessing to the unity of truth. Um, I take this to be your agenda, <laughs> and, and I wish you well, because it is a it was, it's a um, constant challenge, <clears throat> in addition to which the linguistic one, I think the best metaphor in the Bible is the Tower of Babel, which is the description of all international conferences with headphones. <laughs> and you've all been through others where you have to speak very slowly so that the people in the translation cabinet do not fall behind and come out waving their arms. I once said in Rome on something at the Cardinal office, uh, if we do that, we're dead in the water. The baby was out of the cabinet, dead in the water. What is dead in the water? <laughs> so, uh, I once said in our general chapter, we're chartering a DC-10 to go 30 miles. A metaphor for bureaucratic, you know. Total confusion in the Spanish and French cabinet, DC-10, 30 miles. Well, I, I think, therefore, uh, you have my blinking admiration for taking this on, if I understand rightly that that's what you're about, because very few others are. What will archaeologists think of us when they find that the cosmologists and the astronomers were not in communication with one another as the Hubble began to reveal what it's revealing? <clears throat> and the scientists say one thing, the philosophers another, and they're both speaking English. <laughs> but they do not relate. And our philosophy department here in Ed's founding, and still to a great degree, insists that all scientists learn philosophy and all philosophers learn science. But you know what happened over the years. Chemistry for philosophy majors. <laughs> Physics for meaning no lab. <laughs> they probably really rigorous. So uh, it, we have always fallen short of this glorious ideal that truth is one and that we honor God by pursuing any kind of truth openly, honestly, and at times, of course, courageously. So you're welcome. <laughs> Believe me. 
and I wish you well as we say at all conventions in your deliberations. Thank you, Pat.